it's just so hard to know where the truth ends and then fiction begins. New developments in the case of doomsday cult mom Lori Vallow and her husband Chad Daybell. Now authorities are still searching for Vallow's children. How does she pose a threat to your children? I don't know what she's going to do with them. Think about all the people that had to die and disappear. Tell us where the kids are. Nothing is coincidental. This stretch is just so beyond what anyone could imagine. Investigators have recovered human remains at Chad Daybell's residence. There's no way, Lori, and I should have ever come up with this. This is no longer the search for missing children. This is the search for killers. All eyes on this Idaho trial. Lori was his follower. Chad Daybell's the prophet. Chad had a vision. Plagues and foreign troops coming to the soil. It's the doomsday couple. Chad and Lori Daybell on trial. On the docket tonight, the doomsday couple. Uh, this is a case with so many different layers and, and facts. Very complicated case. When we first came across it, it took months to try to understand what happened here and what the allegations are. We're seeing it all play out. But right now, what I want to do is break it down uh, with a timeline of events so you get a better idea of what will be, trust me, the biggest trial of 2023. Here's Chanley Painter. September 1st, 2019. Lori Vallow Daybell and her brother Alex Cox moved from Arizona to Rexburg, Idaho with Lori's children, JJ and Tylee. Rexburg is just a few miles from Salem, Idaho, the home of Chad Daybell, her future husband and co-defendant on charges related to her children's disappearances. September 8th. Lori, Alex, JJ, and Tylee go to Yellowstone National Park for the day. Police say this picture is the last verifiable sighting of Tylee alive. Lori had told friend Melanie Gibb that Tylee is taking classes at BYU-Idaho, but records confirm Tylee was never enrolled. September 19th. Melanie Gibb and her boyfriend visit Lori for the weekend. Lori tells Gibb that JJ has become a zombie. Gibb later tells police nothing seems unusual about his behavior. This is the courtyard where JJ is seen on camera playing with neighborhood kids. But in September, according to police, the children would go missing. September 22nd. The last verifiable sighting of JJ by Melanie Gibb and her boyfriend in Lori's home. November 5th. Lori and Chad tie the knot in Hawaii. November 26th, Rexburg police get involved with the search for the kids at the request of police in Gilbert, Arizona. Rexburg police knocked on this door conducting a welfare check requested by JJ Vallow's grandparents. Lori told police that JJ was with a friend in Arizona. But when that story didn't check out, the police returned the next day with a search warrant, only to find Lori and her new husband Chad Daybell were nowhere to be found. December 20th, while Lori and Chad are back in Hawaii, Rexburg police announce JJ and Tylee are officially missing. January 3rd, 2020, authorities execute a search warrant on Chad Daybell's property. March 6th, Lori has her first court appearance in Rexburg on felony desertion charges after being arrested in Hawaii. June 9th, Police and the FBI return to Daybell's property and discover human remains in a field behind the home. Later, Chad Daybell is arrested and charged with felony counts of destruction or concealment of evidence. June 13th, authorities confirm the remains belong to JJ and Tylee. Now, both Chad Daybell and Lori Daybell will be on trial together. Let's bring back in the think tank, Eklund Mercy, Nima Romani, Kirk Nurmi. Um, Kirk, we're expecting this trial to take about three months at least. Um, it's, it's a complicated story. It's a bizarre story. Um, what are your thoughts about a jury sitting in the box and, and understanding everything that's happening here and how bizarre all of this is? Well, you know, that's going to be the key for the state of Idaho, Vinny, to weave all this information into a, a, a narrative that can sell with the jury, that they can filter through all this information because, 
you know, we have dead children. We have, uh, you know, her husband has passed away. We have all these different events, right? But they're going to have to provide a filter through so the jury can take a look at everything and condense it down so there's a story. Because with so many disparate parts and so many different things happening, and probably what's going to be a very bizarre defense with the doomsday prophet and his wife, they're going to be throwing different things out there regarding their prophecies, one would have to imagine. So the state is going to have to condense it down into simple terms as to which the jury can filter all the information they have. And hopefully with that, that will lead to conviction. Hey, what, what's your biggest concern for prosecutors in this case, Nima? Really just an issue on appeal. I mean, it's such an overwhelmingly strong case, right? So you're looking at the appellate issues, you know, publicity, getting it moved, you know, to some other part of the state, the severance issue, right? Because ultimately you got two dead children in the backyard. You have two crazy people uh, who, and multiple other dead bodies, right? An ex spouse, a brother. So I think the jury is gonna return a guilty verdict. I mean, it's gonna be, talk about significant pressure to do so. There's gonna be overwhelming pressure. Everyone in the world has been waiting for this trial and waiting for January. So I just want to make sure there's not a legal issue that comes up, whether it relates to competency, severance, uh, publicity, some other issue that's just going to make this verdict not stand, because ultimately we're really marching towards this death penalty here, Vinny. Eckler Mercy, you've got both defendants will be there. What What is the dynamic here with the defense teams or the defense attorneys for both? Are they talking to each other? Do they do they have to agree? Do they agree beforehand like this is a unified defense or is it like each man and woman for themselves? How how does that play out in the real world when there are co-defendants and in this case co-defendants who are husband and wife? Oh, it's the Hunger Games. It is the Hunger Games because you you're you're playing chess. You have no idea. Um, you think that they're helpful, but you're not sure. Um, they're trying to be on level footing. There's some there's some evidence that may help both of them, but at the end of the day, you represent your clients. So it is absolutely dog eat dog. Um, there is no love lost. That privilege has been thrown out the window because um, it's a criminal matter now. So it's it's going to be very interesting to see how who's going to hit first i think that the person who comes up with the best story of what happened to these children are the one that will be spared the most kirk what are your thoughts about either one of them taking the witness stand on the one hand you've got chad daybell he's the prophet he's the one who was mesmerizing a whole bunch of people and on the other hand you've got Lori valla daybell who's able to like every few years convince another man to walk down the aisle with her um, what, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I could very easily see Mr. Daybell taking the stand for the reasons you just mentioned. He finds himself as charismatic, charismatic. He convinced people of his righteousness. And I think one of the fears is, especially when we're talking about the death penalty and all those things, is that he's going to use this as a forum to make himself a martyr for his beliefs. So I could not see him resisting the temptation to sit in front of all those cameras and share his beliefs. And quite frankly, if if they if Miss Vallow stays consistent, I think she, I could very well see her do the same thing because I think they're more concerned concerned about a guilty verdict than the death penalty because given their beliefs they may welcome death rather than life in prison so I think their entire focus is going to be on the guilty not guilty phase and they are not going to personally care as much about the death penalty all right take a look folks we have a trial date it's 2023 but early 2023 January 9th we come off the holiday season we get rested up and then boom, January 9th, and we expect this one again to go about three months or so out there in Idaho.